Hey what's up it's Chris here from Chris's Sci-Fi Reactions. Today we're back with another Red Dwarf. This is Season 3, Episode 6, The Last Day. Uh, last episode was pretty good, gave it a 7. Um, yeah, I don't think there's much more. If you want the full and cut unedited reaction, you can head over to Patreon listed in the description below. You can get up to two episodes ahead of YouTube over there. So when this comes out on YouTube, episode two should be available over on Patreon. Yeah, so without further ado, let's just get straight on into this episode. Boxing. Do you like boxing? There's nothing wrong with boxing. It's one of the great working class escape. Uh, Mr. David, sir. A homing pod arrived this morning. There was just one item. <laughs> Greetings. As you are no doubt aware, your Crichton Series 3 mechanism oh, that, that's is now the actor that plays Crichton, life. right? It can hardly have escaped your attention that he's slow, stupid, crudely designed, and quite amazingly ugly. <laughs> he needs replacing. Consequently, his inbuilt hours time. Your droid should use this period, and all mental and physical operations will cease. Then what? I don't know. Maybe I'll get a job as a disc jockey. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just like, lie back and accept it. Oh, it's not the end for me, sir. Sorry, it's just it's the beginning. I have served I my human masters, and now so. I can look forward to my reward in Silicon Heaven. <laughs> Silicon <laughs> what? Surely you've heard of Silicon Heaven. Has it got anything to do with being stuck opposite Bridget Nielsen in a packed lift? <laughs> Electronic afterlife. It's the gathering place for the souls of all electrical equipment. Robots, calculators, toasters, hair dryers. It's our final resting place. <laughs> I don't mean to say anything out of place here, Crichton, but that is completely wacko, Jacko. There is no such thing as Silicon Heaven. Well, then where do all the calculators go? <laughs> they don't go anywhere. They just die. The, the garbage. Surely you believe that God is in all things. Aren't you a pantheist? Yeah, but I just don't think it applies to kitchen utensils. I'm not a frying pantheist. It's <laughs> droppy when it cried. Laundry room and fold some sheets. <laughs> Fun? Well, ah, that's yes, the employment of time in a profitless and non-practical way. Hey, I don't I know like much, that. but one well, thing I do know is how to throw a good time. Right, nice in that, sir. Hello? Is there anybody here? It's party time! <laughs> but this is the officer's club. Mechanoids aren't allowed in here. Come on, come on, sit down, sit down. Let me pour you a drink. Yeah, oh. there's uh, oh. not a lot no, no, of officers I should be doing that. <laughs> Not tonight, buddy. <laughs> oh, oh. Is that alcohol? I don't drink alcohol. It has no effect on my diodes. This will, mate. Something special I whipped up. That's from me. Oh. It's a computer chip. It's a 5517-stroke W13 Alpha Sim <coughs> modem. Oh, it's the interface circuit with a built-in 599XRDP. Oh, how did you know? Intuition. <laughs> what about mine? Well, I, I, I bet this is from me. Holly. I picked it up on trip to Europe. Around the one place. rival collector once offered me one thousand dollar pounds for it. Uh, what is it? General George S. Patton, commander of the Third and Seventh Armies, Allied. And this is his sinal fluid. Like I say, she's not perfect. Oh. <laughs> Don't apologize. It's those cute little flaws that keep a guy interested. <laughs> yeah, I, I like uh, rumors in Napoleon hat. <laughs> My goodness. I do believe I'm drunk. I, I suddenly feel the need to 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 Paris, drank a couple of bottles of cheap red plonk, and then went on a guided tour of the Eiffel Tower. I was okay until I got to the top, but then I couldn't. I woke up with his tongue stuck down my throat. <laughs> Wide awake now, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was Uncle Frank. Oh, that. Jeez. He got the wrong room. He thought I was my mum. <laughs> Oh, God. Mum. I never had a mum. It's all right, buddy. It's all part of being drunk. I never had a mum, neither. 
Well, you can all have mine. <laughs> everyone else did. Jeez. Oh, for God's sake, what's wrong with everyone? Why didn't you have a mum? It's abandoned. Abandoned? Six weeks old. Some cardboard box underneath the pool table. Just abandoned in this pub. Oh, how could nasty. anybody do that? I found out. Never. You've got to ask yourself, who the hell could do something Well, I'd have like thought that. it was obvious. Parents were brother and sister. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm better my innermost, dear. What kind of remark is that? How many toes have you got? He, he would know. I've got ten. Yeah, on both feet. <laughs> all together. They're not webbed or anything, are they? But they weren't related, all right? <laughs> you all right, Craig? This might be one I of my favourite scenes in Red Dwarf. Let's get out of here. Really good fun that was. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. Oh. Oh. Dehydration level, 45%. Recall of previous evening, 2%. <laughs> Embarrassment factor, 91%. Oh. But it could be approximated to enjoyment. Last night, for the first time in my life, I lived. Right, nah. it's ten to seven. That One is. One night. It's not enough. I want more. Can't we override your auto destruct system? <gasps> That's not the problem. What is the problem? That's well, I thought you understood. Sad. It's a service contract. And <laughs> my termination was triggered by the impending arrival of my replacement. What replacement? The new model, the latest upgrade. If I don't terminate myself, he's under. Tell him. Tell him we'll meet him on the landing gantry. Are you sure you want to go through with this, sirs? We'll just tell him to go away. The rest is up to him. He's only a robot. We don't want any trouble. We're not looking for a fight. But if he thinks he can mix it with the Red Dwarf Posse on their homeboy. Sorry? Um, I'm just covering the rear. <laughs> right. They're still not dead. Want any help? If you want him, you're gonna have to come through us. Because you're big mouth again. <laughs> is that the way you want it? It's the way it is. Then you better leave an address. I you really want him. like so Lister in this thing. This episode is really. It's alright, really Mr. Davidson. It. He's bluffing. He's he's programmed not to. Oh jeez. <laughs> International would like to apologize for any inconvenience this may cause. A credit note will be forwarded to your company immediately. So, the actor that plays Crichton, it's basically the PR. He's sort an android. Of His brain couldn't handle the concept of there being no silicon heaven. <laughs> Yours can. Well, I knew something he didn't. What? I knew I was lying. Well, that, that's very, very true. Well, where would all the calculators go? <laughs> really enjoyed that episode. I thought that was really good. Had some excellent moments in, especially that scene where they were all together in the officers club getting drunk. I thought that was an absolutely brilliant scene. Um, what else? Also that scene at the end, you know, where they were standing up to that, uh, android. 
I thought that was good. And the slow motion scene just after the android uh, decides to kill them all. Sometimes in TV shows, slow motion scenes really do not work and they, they just turn out bad. In this episode and in that position, I do feel like that that short, very quick uh, slow-mo with um, Rimmer and the others actually worked. Um, yeah, I must admit, this, I was totally invested. At the beginning, I must admit, it was a bit, yeah, this is just going to be another just okay episode. It's going to be a seven. I think I'm upping that to an eight. I think if it would have continued sort of like it did at the beginning, I would have um, had given it a seven. But I think due to all the scenes, it's worth an eight. I don't think it quite makes it to a nine, but it's certainly worth a, a mid to high eight. But let's break it down anyway. Yeah, we start off, um, Lister's uh, watching, um, I think he called it, it was boxing, I think it was some sort of like female boxing show with way Crichton said, I didn't hear it, but from what I got from it, it's some sort of female boxing that he was watching. Um, Lister says he can look after himself, Crichton throws away the food and... <laughs> then he gets it out of the bin and when Crichton comes back he just sticks it all in his hat and puts his hat on. <laughs> um, here we find out that um, Crichton is very much obsolete, there's a new one coming and that he will be shut down. Crichton is obviously quite, he seems to be upset about it understandably. But he's also very accepting of it because he believes in Silicon Heaven. Um, which is basically just a way that people have programmed computers in this future to basically accept just turning themselves off. Um, here we had sort of a moment between Rimmer and Lister talking about belief, you know, and that it's everyone has the right to their own belief, no matter what it is. And yeah, that was a bit of an interesting conversation. Um, yeah, so here we have uh, them planning to throw Crichton a party, and I feel this is sort of where the episode started going from a 7 to an 8 for me. We had the officers club, um, Holly had made some sort of alcoholic beverages and food that mechanoids can eat that they will feel uh, the effects from. And I think this may be my favourite scene or moment in Red Dwarf so far, um, this this whole thing, it had an emotional punch to it, you know, it wasn't just comedic, it was comedic, but it also had emotion behind it, you know, the sadness of it, but also the happiness to see Crichton sort of experiencing what one would define as life. Now, you know, they were talking about uh, their first drunk times. I remember mine, I think I was 16, <laughs> I got drunk. Um, a bit young, um, here in Australia, uh, legal drinking age is 18, but yeah. Um, I'm not sure what it is in the UK, but yeah, a really good good, solid scene. Um, here we have a robot construction of a 
Marilyn Monroe, I think it was supposed to be. Um, giving all different presents to Crichton. Cat uh, obviously gives him a present that he himself really doesn't like because he just wants to get rid of it. And Cat's narcissistic behavior <laughs> is counting him to be the ultimate narcissist. Um, here we see that the upgrade is coming. Uh, Crichton really talking about how this is the first time he's lived life and he wants to live life more. And it'll be interesting to see if we get more of these sort of things as the series goes along with Crichton wanting to live maybe more than just just being a cleaner and just doing those very basic chores that humans don't want to do and maybe living a bit more like Lister and sort of having a bit of a party, you know, and just having more fun than just um, being very much like, yep, it's my job to clean, I'm going to clean, that's all I'm programmed for. So that will be interesting. Here we have the replacement robot coming and they decide to stand with Crichton and tell him to get lost. Rimmer stands up <laughs> to him, which was this is quite a funny scene. Then it realizes it can destroy a mole. And when Crichton tells him there's no silicon heaven, Literally, he shuts down. He, his program couldn't take it. But whereas Crichton knew he was lying. Because, yeah, obviously Crichton has mastered some lying skills. Okay, so that was my breakdown of Red Dwarf um, Series 3, Episode 6. Really enjoyed this series, uh, or season. Um, looking forward to getting into the next one. Remember, if you uh, want the full uncut unedited reaction, you can head over to Patreon and get episode two now of Red Dwarf series four. Uh, yeah. So also my social media accounts are listed in the description below. If you enjoyed this reaction, don't forget to give it a like, share and subscribe. And I will see you next time for another Red Dwarf. Bye.